Now in its third year, it's a yank on the footy with Craig Wessels talking about the greatest game on the face of the earth. Sit back and enjoy, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 172 of A Yank on the Footy. I'm Craig Wessels coming to you from Sandusky, Ohio, and thanks for giving the episode a listen. In this episode, I get the opportunity to sit down with Richmond Premiership player and later on North Melbourne Kangaroo, John Perry. Now, don't forget that if you are interested in having your local footy club get a shout-out during an upcoming episode, drop me a note via email or a message on Facebook or Twitter or through Instagram. I absolutely love being able to highlight these clubs. It lets me learn a little bit, learn a little bit about the uh, the the local game and see how it ends up growing into the the game that I've fallen in love with. Also, learning a little bit about the geography of where these clubs happen to be located as well. Now, today's club of the episode, and it fits in nicely with our discussion we're going to be having here, is the Wodonga Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs play in the Ovens and Murray Football League. And the club played their first friendly matches way back in 1878. And a couple of the key events through their history, their thirds and under-18 side played in 11 consecutive grand finals in their league from 1977 through 1987, winning seven premierships. And then they played in seven consecutive grand finals Again, between 2001 and 2007, winning five. Now, moving to the present day, the club plays their next game on June 4th against the Karoa Rutherglen Ruse. So best of luck to the Bulldogs as they continue their fixture next week. They had a bye this weekend. You can find everything related to the podcast over at my website, ayankonthefooty.com. I do hope you'll consider checking it out. You can leave me a voicemail there. You can share your views on an issue from a previous round or a question that you might have for me. You can also get signed up on the mailing list there as well. So if you have an idea or uh, anything like that, please share. And if you're on the mailing list, as soon as a new episode comes out, it will be in your inbox within about 90 seconds of when that's released. So talk about a great deal. Yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, I do hope that you'll consider doing that. And, folks, if you want to help out the show, uh, you can click on the Buy Me a Coffee button in the bottom left-hand corner of, of my uh, website. Also, if you're interested in any of the podcast gear, you can find that on my Redbubble page as well. And you can reach me by email at yankonthefooty at gmail.com, on Twitter at yank underscore on, and on Facebook, look for the the tag a yank on the footy podcast that's my updated one since i lost mine back in august and on instagram over at a yank on the footy so let's dive into my talk with richmond and north melbourne player mr john perry an absolutely wonderful gentleman i'm so glad that uh his nephew was able to set this up for me and i truly truly appreciate it all right ladies and gentlemen my guest is a life member of the richmond tigers and a 1967 premiership player with said Tigers. Following his time with Richmond, he moved on to play parts of five more years with the North Melbourne Kangaroos. I am absolutely thrilled to be joined by John Perry. John, thank you so very much for taking time out of your Saturday morning, sir. Good you, Craig. Yeah. Pleasure. Absolutely. We, we've been talking for about 15 to 20 minutes or so off air, some great stories. I'm, I'm hoping I remember each of them to bring them back up so we can get them recorded as well. Um, but I, I do want to thank uh, Peter. Is Peter's your nephew, correct? Yes. Okay, Peter. I want to. I know you're there. I want to thank you for you know, helping to set this up, sir. This was uh, absolutely terrific on your part. So now he's gone. He's, oh, he's gone. He's gone now. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So you are you are from the Albury Wodonga area, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Northeast Victoria, yes. Correct. Okay, so you, uh, how, take us through your formative years as a player before you found yourself with Richmond. Can you tell us a little bit about how the path that took you to the Tigers? Yeah, well, back back in those days, um, there was no TV, of course. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know much about football. But I do remember, Mum, we had a hotel. Uh, and I remember on a, on a Saturday night at six o'clock, mum would be listening in to see the footy scores, listen to the footy scores. 
and the waves would come in and out, you know, where you'd pick up the, the announcer, then, then you'd drift away and mm -hmm. sort of reception from Melbourne. And whenever Richmond won, mum would jump up and down and scream. And we didn't know what was wrong, what was going on. <laughs> and we, as we got older, we realised, we heard little stories, snippets of information that she had brothers who played down there. Mm -hmm. um, then personally, as a footballer, we didn't have any, we didn't have football at primary school. It was only when I went to high school that I, that I um, became interested in the game. Um, yeah, mum's two brothers played in premierships in the 30s. Okay. Uh, they, uncle, they rang up their dad, old Bill Strang, to invite Gordon down. Now, old Bill himself played with South Melbourne back in early, earlier in the century, about 1910. He was a great player. In fact, he okay. was captain for a while before he went off to Sydney to be manager of Young Husbands or one of those um, um, stock, stock, what do they call them? Young Husbands or Girls Group what They sell cattle and sheep and everything. Anyway. Okay, okay. And old Bill said, look, you can, you can go, you can, Gordon will come down, but Doug, you've got to take Doug with him, his younger brother. Mm -hmm. And reluctantly, Richmond thought, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so they've both gone down and uh, they, they played the first match. And the second match was at, against North Melbourne at Punt Road. And old Bill Strain went up to the Checker Hughes, the coach of, and this is where Nickman comes from, mum, went up to Checker Hughes, the coach of Richmond, and said, look, Thank you very much for inviting my boys down to play with this wonderful club. We left Aubrey at three o'clock this morning to get here. Now, if you don't play young, young Douglas at full forward and young Cocker at centre half back, they're going to get in the car now and we're going to go back to Aubrey. This is before. <laughs> Gordon's, Gordon's taken 18 marks at centre half back. Uh huh. Douglas has kicked, which is still a record number of individual goals, kick 14. Wow. In wow. second league game. Wow. Uh, so, how about that? so what's interesting is that, you know, in, in today, in sport today, there's often talk about how, you know, the parents can be very direct and forceful and, you know, and giving the umpires and coaches and that sort of thing a hard time. But it sounds like, sounds like Bill was doing that long before the oh, present day. <laughs> for real. Yeah, um, that's that that's amazing. So and, and, and Craig, when they when they went down there, because Jack Dyer is a great, he's a Richmond immortal, Jack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Coached and played three hundred odd games, coached him. Anyone in football knows of Jack Dyer, who has passed away, of course, about fifteen or twenty years ago now. Um, he used to come up home to our hotel in Wodonga, which is three hundred miles from Melbourne or two hundred miles from Melbourne. And uh, he'd spend a week every every year at the hotel. Different ones would take him shooting and fishing and everything. But Jack used to, I remember Jack saying, what in the hell are Richmond doing bringing Prottos to our club? But when the boys played, and plus the fact they had the pub over the road, in Punt, uh -huh. on, on Punt Road, the players soon changed their opinion of them. But okay. uh, religion was a, pretty strong back in the 30s. Right, right. Which was a Catholic club. Anyway, but push all that aside, they just embraced the boys. Yeah, so they were, they're very, very, very big. It's a big name at Richmond, the strength. So, so mum was a strength. So, mm. so the, fa the fact that your, your family played with this club, that helped to lead you to becoming part yeah, of this well, club then? Yeah, well, they kept an eye on me, I suppose. And, uh, and I, of course, I started playing juniors when I was about thirteen. Mm -hmm. And as you get, as you get, and I used to, I remember, I used to run the hills around the pub and lift logs of wood, trying to get strong and wanting to be a good player. And then, as the years go on, you become stronger and bigger. And I was starting to show a bit of this and that. Yeah, a bit of talent up here, I guess. Well, and, and that's. That's what you had to do to help build up your strength because, you know, the, the, the club didn't have the, the 10,000 square foot weight room and oh, no. fitness no. room and that sort of no. thing. You, 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 you were what you became what they call country strong. 
right? Where you, you were doing things that, to help build you up to do the jobs that you had to do. That was a younger brother, Alan, who played at South Melbourne, but his career was interrupted with the war. Mm -hmm. he, he was the one of the rep, and uh, I was in Melbourne with him, in Richmond, actually, looking servicing some hotels. And he said, if you walk around, those, if you turn the traffic lights up there and walk up 100, 100 yards, and over the roads is the ground where your, brother, where your uncles played, which was Pump Road. Mm -hmm. So I went for a walk, and I found it, and I walked up, and I stood there, and I cried. Wow. Not, no, wow. I didn't know anything about football. All I know, all I know is that they played for Richmond and mm -hmm. they were great players. And I'm looking at where they played. And I guess it was that moment that that uh, was like a magnet, I guess. I, I just wanted to, I wanted to be them. I wanted to emulate them. That's Not where you see it. Yeah, that's where you started to figure out why your mom got so excited when she heard yeah. the football scores yeah. then. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then I, then I started playing the game, mm -hmm. riding my bike into Wodonga. And uh, as I said, as the years went on, I, yeah. And as a young fellow, I got um, I won Wodonga's best and fairest. I got runner-up in the league best and fairest at the age of 17. And Richmond knew all this and they invited me down. And, okay. Uh, so you, you played your first games with Richmond in 1964. Yeah, let me I'm tell you how easy, this, how easy it was, Craig. They flown me down for the last practice match of okay. that season in 64, the last practice match at Punk Road. I'm only a skinny kid. They flew me down. I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. But anyway, I played, and I played very well. Mm -hmm. me, I'm in the seniors the following week at wow. Footscray. Yeah. And, was, uh, that, was that also your first time on an airplane? No, I'd been up to mum's other sister lived in Queensland. Okay. Up okay. Yeah. Okay. No, because no, because that that could be that could be something that that is a, is a bit of a culture shock as well. That first that first time that you go in in an airplane somewhere, you know, and realize that wait a minute, I can't actually touch what's underneath me now. That that could be a little nerve wracking. So I'm to play the next match as well against um, Essendon, mm -hmm. and uh, I get to the Aubrey Airport. And it's bloody uh, fogged. I couldn't leave the, the airport. Um, wouldn't let our planes to leave. Wow. And I get into not tell them when it was the Essendon Airport in those days. Very, it was probably about one o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a, a van that picked me up, a bloke that picked me up in this van, and I got changed into my footy gear on the way to the MCG. Or it was Punk Road, actually. Right. And... Uh, I flew across the Yarra Park with a with a with me fully fledged all my boots and Guernsey and and everyone was probably wondering who's this the uh, bloke this idiot and I get there yeah and I get to the ground and the boys are walking running out of the ground uh -huh. and Graham Richmond who was the secretary of the club like the CEO of the club mm -hmm. said John if you were one second later you'd be out of the team go and have a rub down and I've never had a rub down in my life. Yeah. It was Angela's day, actually. So I had a few minutes to get myself settled. Anyway, I'll, get, I'll cut all that short. First quarter, I get a, a, a quite a number of kicks in the first 10 minutes. And then a bloke ran through me and broke my shoulder. Wow. <laughs> so that was the start of the rot as far as injuries and sickness yeah. are concerned, as far as I'm concerned. So were you... Did yeah. Did you have a little bit of bad luck? Because you know, in, in you know, the number of years that you were there, it looked like you you know you won a you won a premiership in the reserves in '66. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, but you but you you know you you got yeah. into you know three games of the senior side there, but you got into you got into 13 games in the senior side in '67 and won the premiership there at that point in time. And that's you know what is it, what's it like to win a premiership? Oh Christ. We, uh, I was I was working and living in a pub in Richmond at the time. Okay, so you were in, so you were not having to fly in for every game now. No, you, no. you they you were in Richmond at this point in time. Then that's good. Well, how many days had gone, and what was it like? Hey, look, it was twenty three years since we previously won a premiership, mm -hmm. and there's people crying everywhere. They were so. It was the greatest thing that ever happened to a lot of people. Football stirs up a lot of emotions, as you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
a particular year game. It was just, we were so proud to be able to deliver a premiership. And we were all proud of each other too, don't worry. We all hold on to each other even today. Mm-hmm. We have reunions every year. And all the boys come and we're all brothers. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to have happened to me, experience to have happened to me. Yeah, I mean, you, it's, you did something that so many of your peers that played on other clubs didn't experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you were in a position, you know, there may, they may have been wonderful players, but the circumstances that they were, their club could not get into the position where they were going to, they, that they were going to win that premiership. I suppose you know? when, when you haven't won one, you don't know how, what it is like. Right. Yeah. I mean, you look at, you look at what went on this past year with Melbourne, you know, who hadn't won yeah. one since 19, well, since 1964. 60, yeah. yeah, since he, you know, because I, you know, that was that was why I was able because Frank Davis's son lives here in the United States, and I talked to him. It's been a little while since I've talked to him, but normally I'm talking to him every week or every couple of weeks. I'm trading messages with him online, but he, you know, he started one of the 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 teams here in the United States in in Minneapolis, oh. Minnesota. Oh, good boy. His yeah. father was a fine man. Yes. He, he, oh, he was he was an absolute gentleman. I mean, that's that's the thing is that I I. You know, I've, I, you know, I, I, I love talking with, you know, when I spoke with Mr. Nixon, but, you know, um, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Davis were, were just absolutely gracious gentlemen. And I, you know, I, and it enjoyed my time that I was able to spend with them. Brilliant. And it's, it's been, you know, it was, it was great. When you speak to Frank Davis's son again, tell him to ask his dad about when Sam Kikovic went through him from North, North Melbourne. I was playing with North Melbourne at the time. And Sam went through Frank Davis and me in one collision. Frank Davis says, I got a eye, not my eye didn't leave me socket, but I copped a beauty around the eyes. Yeah. And Frank's testicle went up into his stomach and didn't play for six weeks. Oh my God. <laughs> How brutal is that? Well, and, in, and, inter- and interesti- interestingly yeah. enough, his son is here. So, <laughs> did he know? Yeah. where you I- see him? I guess you only uh, need one. It's <laughs> lucky to be here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that you said his name. His name was Kekovic. 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 Okay. Kekovich. Oh, a big name at North Melbourne. Okay. He came from up at Moodleford, just up this way. Sam. Okay. I, I will have to ask Kekovich. him about that. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, I. I mean, I have. I mean, I actually. It, what's interesting is it is that the son is a D supporter. He's a mad D supporter. But he also has several daughters, and they and they're younger. They're all Hawthorne supporters because they they became footy fans while he was working in the recruiting office with the Hawks when they were winning all the premierships back in the I think it was the eighties I believe when they were winning the, the premierships there. So they 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 got they to experience that, and and he was old enough that he got to experience a little bit of his dad when he was still with with the D's. So that it's kind of a neat little. Uh, dichotomy but between them there so you mentioned that during your time that you were with Richmond that you you had to serve national service now was that what years did you have to do that and what did that consist of well well I just came out of the blue I was in the very first intake and I was the first footballer to go in Mm -hmm. there was no one there was no experience beforehand we didn't know what was going on we just had to be at um at the Swan Street Barracks at, in Richmond, just at, at a certain time, on a, on a 1st of July, 1965. Okay. And then we're off for two years. We didn't know where it was going to take us. It took me, I was lucky, because when Mr. Mr. Holt was the, was the Prime Minister of Australia. Uh, and he's, he, was, he's the gentleman who disappeared in the surf, correct? Yes, okay, yes. yes. And uh, Vietnam was on the go. That's why mm-hmm. the National Service was introduced. But back then, <sighs> National Servicemen didn't have to go with their unit to Vietnam if they didn't want to. And I didn't want to, because all I want to do is play bloody footy. All I yeah. want to do is get to Melbourne. There was no conscientious objectors or anything back then. It was just all new. And I wasn't trying to squib going to Vietnam. We didn't even know what was going on over there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but... Um, so luckily, I didn't have to go to Vietnam with my unit. I stayed back here at Bandiana. I went to Kanungra Jungle Training Centre for three months, 
but I've spent a lot of 12 months back in Melbourne, which enabled me to play footy again. Okay, so you, so mi- you missed lucky. out on you missed out on a lot of footy then. Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. then I had hepatitis. Uh, whilst I was at Richmond, that was another year gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, a lot of people have luck. A lot of a lot of people have bad luck. But all in all, you do it again, Craig. Yeah. Well, that you know, you you, you, came, you came back after you finished it up. Your your first year back, if I'm not mistaken, you won the premiership, correct? Yes. Yes. So that's so I mean. Just, and, yeah. Three months later, three months later. That that's, you know, it's. uh, It was big. Yeah, it is a. um, But anyone can play them. It's just a. Well, it's funny you mentioned. Luck of the bloody bloody caper. Yeah, you mentioned that you know that that if you didn't want to go to Vietnam, you didn't have to go. I I, I'm gonna. Let me ask you this: Were there were there people that were in your unit that said? Yes, I want to go. Not national servicemen that I could at that time. Okay. But I remember, but I, my brother-in-law, Jeff, Jeff, that's Peter's father. Okay. He, he, went, he was in Vietnam at, the, at that time. Okay. The same, the same unit, yeah. Okay. Wow. Supply, supply unit. Okay. So that, so there, so there were some people that did end up, that did end up going there then. Okay. Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh yeah, I knew a lot of guys that went to Vietnam because we, our pub was at Banyan, the army camp, and they used to drink at the pub. Yeah, I, yeah. So I was lucky to be to be posted to Banyan, close to my own home, for, for a quite a amount of that time. I was in the two, you know, for six months, I guess, in, uh, out of the two years. Mm-hmm. So, y- you spent several years with the Tigers uh, organization, and. You ended up then moving on to Richmond, or not to Richmond. You were with North Richmond North. to North Melbourne. What yeah. what led to the the move to North what, Melbourne? What what caused that, or uh, how did that happen? Yeah, I guess in '69 was my last year at Richmond. I won the reserves, best and fairest. I got runner up in the league, best and fairest, but I couldn't break into the senior side because mm-hmm. back then you were designated a wingman half forward or a half back you weren't versatility of players versatility playing here and there and everywhere I mean players today can play anywhere but back then you're either a winger or a flanker or a rover mm-hmm. uh, and Francis Burke and Dickie Clay who were great mates of mine never got injured so I couldn't get a game <laughs> I snuck one down a game yeah. and so 69 premiership come about and I was first emergency, which was the 21st player. Right, right. I've got 22 now, so I could have been a dual premiership player. Oh, if, man. Uh, yeah, so I just missed out, and I was bloody disappointed. And uh, Keith McKenzie, who was coaching North Melbourne at the time, came to my our hotel where I was working and living to see if I'd – to invite me to go to North Melbourne. Uh-huh. Um, and Graham Richmond – owned the hotel. He was a CEO of Richmond as well. Right, right. And became my brother-in-law. Look, it's a long, it's not a long story, but it's everyone's got a story, Craig. Okay. So, so I thought, geez, I was so bloody pleased that's so pr- not proud either. So I wanted that someone would think of me. Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, so that, has, thought, that has to make you feel good to think that another club yeah. you know, that, that that another club is seeking you out. Yeah. Rather, rather than Richmond telling you, hey, there's the I, door, you know. They didn't just show me the door. They just used me when they needed me. Right, right. They didn't want to, they didn't want to, I didn't get a clearance till the Thursday before the first match. They didn't want to lose me mm-hmm. because, well, I, and I still have black and gold in me, in me blood. You're a <laughs> premiership I, player. I, I, can, I can completely understand that. And even when I was at North Melbourne, I had the black and gold in me blood. But I had some good years at North, and I loved all the boys. Right, did, right. Yeah, I did, and I loved the administration. And, uh, and they were, as of when I left, again, there was other guys coming in that were as, probably better than I, and I just found myself on the outer. Mm-hmm. And then I went off and played with um, in the VFA with Ted Whitten and Tony Jewell, a couple of great football names. I right, was pretty right. lucky. Yeah, I was lucky with um, with the people who coached me, and I've probably had better coaches than anyone in the league that's ever played the game. 
and yeah, you, would know their, you wouldn't know their names, Craig. Well, well I, I, I have them written down. I mean, I, I'm Lynch. familiar with the name Ted Witten, and I think I, word, word, I, moved it, word, I moved it around on my paper here. Uh, ben Smith, number one. He was the instigator of play on football. Yeah, uh, Tom Hafey and Ron Barassi. Yeah, Tommy, yeah, Lynn died. Tommy, come on. Yeah, Brassy at North Melbourne. Tony Jewell at Caulfield. Then Ted Whitten at uh, Williamstown. Had a pub over there for a couple of years. Yeah, anyway. Now, Williamstown, are, uh, they, 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 there's, their mascot is a bird of some sort, right? Um, seagull, yeah. Yeah. Seagull. See? Yeah. Yeah. Blue, oh, and, yeah. blue and gold. Light blue and gold, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I was lucky with... Um, with what I did and where I went and the people I met. Okay. So Both you, clubs. you know, you, you moved from a club that had had a lot of success and you were, you know, yeah. you were one person away from becoming a dual premiership player yeah. to a club that uh, in 1972, not long after you get there are taking the wooden spoon. Correct. Okay. But there's, there's something happening. You know, you're, you're playing, you're getting, playing time in the senior side at that point in time so so yes while you may not have been winning games you're thinking you know what i am playing in with the big club so that's there had to be a little bit of a kind of a trade-off where you're thinking yeah i'm still there's still the, the black and gold there but uh i'm getting i'm getting games now oh yeah i'm so proud don't worry jesus yeah so you know and i, and I was looking at it here because you know you went through you know a, a 22 game fixture like today and you won one game that year. I mean, how 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 difficult is that? And you know, let's let's be honest. There are a couple clubs right now that are on pace to do that exact same thing right now. Um, the supporters you know, keep you going. Okay. They keep, coming, they keep coming to the game. They keep cheering for you. Okay. And they give you inspiration. Yeah, but it's you know it's a. It, what was interesting though is this wheel always watching. turns, Craig. The wheel turns, and it, right. turned, it did right. turn for North Melbourne. But you were at that point in time, was the, was the club kind of in a, a rebuilding mode similar to what the Roos are doing right now? Yes, okay, but so. what happened was, um, if a player had played 10 years at a club, mm -hmm. We could snabble him. So we were North Melbourne were onto this and we snabbled some players like Doug Wade, a full forward, Barry Davis, who broke my shoulder at Essendon, Sinaha, <laughs> he came, he was captain of our okay. club, Johnny Rantel, a halfback from South Melbourne. So North Melbourne picked up three or four very, you know, 10 year players from other clubs. Mm -hmm. Of course, we started to rise. Right. And then fortunately, some guys we we I say Richmond North Melbourne recruited developed into damn good players. You know David Pitch, Keith Green, Wayne Shimabush, Malcolm Blight. Oh look, they become a power club North Melbourne. Yeah, like I said, the wheel turns. You can't say too much because bloody next year the opposite might happen. Right, right, yeah. So that I just I just hope North. You don't know who, when you're recruiting players. You don't know how they're going to turn out. It's, it's a lottery in a way. Right, and it's and. And the, the players that are coming in, you know, are are so young at 18 or 19 years old that that especially if, if they're nowadays, if they're if they're you know playing interstate, that's a big culture shock, you know, because oh, if sure. you know, because yeah. like for example, uh, Jason Horn Francis, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he yeah. from South Australia? Yes, at North yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you know, he's you know, so it's a bit of a shock being, you know, several, you know, several hundred mean, kilometers from home. At 18 years of age. Yeah. You're only a boy. Right. And most of those players out there are still boys. You know, they're still they're in their 20s. Yes. They're only boys having fun. Yeah. Join their teammates. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, yeah. And I look at it and I'm thinking, you know, I'm not quite at the point in time yet where, you know, the, the, the players that are going out there could be my grandchildren yet. I mean, I'm, you know, my kids are, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm 58 years old, but they're not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm getting close to it though, to where I can have, you know, grandkid age players out there. But, you know, it was. It a, lot was of pressure on them. a lot of pressure on them these days with the oh. scrutiny from the, from the media. It's bloody horrific. Yeah. Nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide TV, radio, newspapers. Well, they'll pick up, they pick up every small move. 
and and the part that you're you know what we're doing right now being on the internet you you have you might have you might have to have peter show you just how some of the stuff has shown up on here there's so much stuff that is here that that i think you would be stunned by oh, what fun. what shows up on here and and it, it's not such a bad thing that you made that you haven't checked it out that's that's completely okay talk. yeah I'm so, to be horses. I mean, you know, God. as you mentioned you brought in you know, you know, tenure players from other clubs, you know, you ended up, you know, in 73, you jumped up to the sixth spot on the ladder. You won 10 more games. You know, you had a Brownlow winner uh, who won back to back oh, in, in Keith, what a in Keith Gregg. A wonderful player. You wouldn't have seen a bloke. He's so graceful the way he moved, moved across the field, like an Aboriginal, I shouldn't say Aboriginal, like an Indigenous kid of today. They just, he was a wonderful player. Mm -hmm. Keith Gregg. Mm. So, you know, and as you said, you you started to see the 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 young people that they brought in begin to pay off in terms of, of developing skills. And yeah. and I and I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump away from that for just a second. And I, you know, one of the people online that asked, you know, a question that wanted to to ask you a question, they they were wondering, and I, let me see, I wrote it down here. Uh, I actually highlighted it. They said that um, oh, let me find it here. They said they wanted to get your opinion on North Melbourne's drafting over the last couple of years. And, and how do you think that they look, how do you think they're going to look like four years from now with what, with what they're building right now with, with the ruse? Rod lucky the Cape Craig, like I said before, you don't know the quality of the person you recruit mm -hmm. as far as how tough they are in the mind. Right. They've got to put themselves through a lot of purgatory and some blokes can handle it and some can't. You don't know. The, it's too young. To, no, it's hard, to, it's hard to say. You just hope to God that they can um, pluck something out of it and become, because they've been horrid, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Don't know. It, it, is, it is tough, but it... Um... The bounce of the ball. Yeah. Some clubs have luck, others don't. Like you pick a player at number six, he's a dud. The bloke you, you, you should have gone for become a bloody Brownlow medalist and premiership yeah. or whatever. You know, you yeah. just don't know. They're too young. Now I don't I don't know how much you know about the 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 NBA here in the United States, but I'm sure you've heard the name Michael Jordan. Oh yes. Yeah. You know, Michael Jordan was a phenomenal basketball player. I believe he was picked number two in the draft behind a a very tall young man by the name name of sam Bowie, who was a center at the university of kentucky who was an okay player but he wasn't michael jordan uh, so, yeah, so he, he he has always lumped into that you know the, that yeah. team could have could have had michael jordan instead of him um so yeah so you you spent several years with the the ruse and then you move on and head back to Wodonga and you become the, the captain and coach of the club there in 1977 if I'm not mistaken yeah but you ended up having to stop playing at that point in time because it's you know from what I have been reading you had a rather significant injury that took place is that something that that I still get emotional today Okay. It was the first quarter of the first game that I coached. Oh, man. And I got squashed by a, a big uh, lumberjack, a big bloke from Myrtleford. And look, I got, my stomach was perforated, my pancreas was perforated, I had four, wow. lots of bowel, four lots of intestines and bowel taken out. Over... I was in hospital for 16 weeks. And, but here I am, fit as a bloody trout. No, no fit as 77-year-old in Wodonga. Because yeah, I, yeah. I, I used to run the hills, Craig. Yeah. And I, was, I just knew what you had to do to be as good as you can be. Yeah. And uh, I was so, so fit. That's what got me through. Plus a damn good surgeon who just mm -hmm. came to Wodonga yeah. at the time. And... Uh, and I couldn't get back to football again in case I got a, a wayward kick of any kind when I was trained. When I was, if I couldn't go back to coaching in case I got a wayward kick by, you don't know what what happens. 
Right, right. Training, you don't know. Well, someone might run into you, even though you're not playing. Mm -hmm. No, I had to give it away. Okay. Uh, so we need to illustration side of things. Okay, I was, I was going to ask that then. So you you kind of stayed with the game in another capacity then after you were... Yeah, we developed, a second, we, yeah, we, sec, we developed a second Wodonga team to come into the Ovens of Merrick, Wodonga Raiders. Okay. Uh, Brian Dixon, who coached us at North, coached me at North Melbourne, became the youth sport and rec minister of Victoria. And I went and saw him about, about uh, getting some money for the Wodonga Council to develop a second ground. Okay. Because football was, uh, um, with Lavington and North Aubrey and Aubrey were full of Wodonga players going over to try and play, like I did at North Melbourne. Went right. to North Melbourne to get a senior game. There's a lot of boys going to Aubrey and North Aubrey and Lavington for Wodonga because only one team in Wodonga. No, winning premierships at Wodonga. Anyway, cut a long story short. Brian Dixon um, handed the council some money and we've got the most wonderful facility up, second facility up here in Wodonga. So I put my energies into that after I'd um, after my injury, well, after I'd give, had to give away coaching. On the on the administrative side then. So you stayed yeah. with that for a while. Okay. Mind you, if I'd stayed coaching, I would have had to spill a new club rooms at Wodonga to put all the bloody premiership flags up. Because <laughs> we had the best thing going, I'm telling yeah. you. No boy would have left me. Yeah. Yeah, we would, I reckon we would have. That year they won their first 12 games. They were so fit. Okay. Anyway, and got yeah. knocked off by five points in the preliminary final. Now, if I'm uh, not mistaken, and I and I could you know, I, I I I have have spoken to so many people, but I mentioned to you that I had spoken to somebody back in February that was with the Albury Tigers. And I believe he sent me a video of a uh, Owens and Murray uh, grand final game that just became this huge fight, if oh, I'm yeah. not mistaken. Wodonga Levington, yeah. Yes, yeah, that was the other club. Yeah, I've watched I've watched that video, and it was just, and it just <laughs> it seemed like it went on for many, 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 many minutes. Still you know, spoken of today, of course. Yeah. Back in, it's, I think it was about 80, what, 89, was it? I think that's something like that, yeah. Something like coach that. Of, coach of Wodonga ended up being the umpire in charge of umpires in the AFL, Jeff okay. Bish. <laughs> but no, he wasn't one of the instigators. He was, yeah. uh, that was pretty brutal, that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've seen the video of that on YouTube. But um, who was the best player? that you played alongside and the best player that you played against in your career? Not, fair, not a fair question. Okay, Royce you, can Hart, give, you, can, you can give me more than one. That's okay. You can, you can make a list. Royce Hart at Richmond. Kid from Clarence, Tasmania come across. Only six foot one, but he, he could mark a ball. He just glided across the pack and took the ball with him and an absolute wonderful kick and goal. He was just poetry in motion. Royce Hart, okay. number four, same, same number as Dusty Martin carries for Richmond today. Yeah, Royce would be uh, Keith Grigg, whom you mentioned before, the winger at mm -hmm. North Melbourne, who won two, two, uh, two uh, Brownlow medals. He, oh, gee, people went to the footy just to watch him. Yeah. The grace, his grace. But then, their, their poetry in motion, those two blokes. Toughness, Francis Burke at Richmond. Bob Snake still is. Okay. Um, and that, might that be one, I might be one eyed there. You know what? That is, I, I'm just going to say that, that, that is wonderful that, you know, that, that somebody who you played alongside over 50 years ago, you're still best mates with today. I mean, that is just, that is something that, that, that people can only dream of, of being able to have in their lives is having somebody that, that you can say 50 years out that you could, you know, you could call him you know, at the drop of a hat, you know, if you've got an issue or something to talk about or whatever, and he's there, he's there to help you. That's the wonderful thing about a team sport. Mm -hmm. And particularly, particularly when I was my Richmond teammates, mm -hmm. Because we did something together. 
Yeah. And we're also proud of it. But Berkey and I went into pubs and we were the best of mates. But I could tell you some other stories which I won't. Um, right. I've, I've just organised, you know, Mick Malloy? I, I do from the, the front bar, right? Media, yes, him, yeah. I've organised for Francis and Royce Hart and Mick to get together. And Royce is a recluse in Tasmania. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's other stories I could tell you. It's only because you know people for a long time and they trust you and everything like that. Yeah, anyway, it's a wonderful... And, 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 that's, and that, quite frankly, is is one of the toughest things that I have, you know, with doing this podcast from, you know, never having had a face-to-face, an actual face-to-face conversation with anybody. It's, you know, me getting my, my foot in the door to be, you know, cause people still are like, who the heck is this guy? Uh, so, you know, it's, but it's, I'm, you know, every, every time I, I, every time I get to speak to a gentleman like yourself or to, you know, or, or something like that, it, it helps to just build that a little bit more that, you know, that maybe that pays off in spades down the road a little bit more, but yeah, that's yeah, it, it gets terrific that that you you got Mick Malloy going down there. I don't I don't get to see the front bar as often as I'd like. Um, I can watch that well, one on YouTube. Mick didn't um, say I wanted to be part of the front bar. All he wanted to do was bring them together mm-hmm. and talk with them because we're all going to be dead soon. And Roycey. Roycey, and we're, we're, it'll be missed out on both great players at Richmond. It's, uh, yeah, because Royce is a recluse. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he's going to he's going to meet up with Francis and Mick. Um, anyway, it's another story. I mean that that is that's terrific that you were able to set that up. Uh, you know, I where where did I leave off in my notes here? You know, I uh, it's going to be something for the Richmond archives. Those two boys being interviewed together. Yeah, that would that's going to be fantastic. It'll be lost if they don't do it. It's, it's history gone. No, uh, and that's we've got, we got to pick up on it. And that is, yeah, that is, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how big of a role I'm I'm playing in that, but I love being able to to talk to people who have played the game in the past. But like I said, you know, it it it's an opportunity for you know because I've read several articles, you know, that you know that that were about you when the, the Tigers were playing in the 2017 premiership. I mean, I saw several articles that I read about you. There were a couple of quotes that I saw that were attributed to you in there, but you know, you not necessarily a lot of people had maybe read those or maybe they'd forgotten about it, but it's, it's great to be able to get these stories out there. Um, you know, not only for my own edification for me to, to learn about these kinds of things, but hopefully you know, the people that, that do listen to the podcast will be able to make those connections and, and hear the names that you're mentioning and then, and kind of put these things together like a, a bit of a puzzle uh, and, yeah. and, and have this stuff to, to go back and listen to. Yeah, everyone's got their own memories, memories, haven't they? Everyone's got yeah. their memories. Right, absolutely, absolutely. I don't know who they break for. Now, I do want to jump into the game in the present day here for just a second and then you know, get back into some of these other things that people had asked if, if, if that's okay. Um, what, what do you like about the way the game is played today? And what do you not like about the way the game's played today? What I don't like is this uh, stand, stand, stand uh-huh. rubbish, which enables a player with a ball to take off. Right. To a too big, an, uh, a too big an advantage for their, for their team in a lot of situations. What do I like about it? I just love the way the boys, it's a, it's a gladiator game. Mm-hmm. I just love the way they give their bodies. I just love the way they give their bodies for, their, for themselves, their teammates, their club. Right, I just right. love the, the gladiator stuff. They, yeah. The way that's played today, it's bloody, it's unreal. It's, it's amazing because, you know, when I, you know, like for example, this morning, I, you know, I got, I got into my classroom this morning at six o'clock in the morning and my, my students don't show up until a couple minutes after eight o'clock. So I got there and the, the, the blues and swans game was on this morning at five fifty my time. So I listened to uh, the first 20 minutes or so of the game on, uh, I, I like listening to the game on uh, the, the NEARS, the national indigenous radio service. When I get the chance, I, I really like the way they call a game. 
but then I then I'll put it on the television in my classroom. But it's amazing watching you know kids who play football American football, seeing what these athletes are doing in this game and realizing they're not wearing any kind of padding, are they? I said, no, guys, they're not. They're not. And I said, and look at the look at the size of the ground that they're playing on. And I and there's a video that that I can show them where they they take like a, an NFL field and they overlay it. And it's tiny compared to, you know, to the, you know, the 185 meters from end to end and 155 at the, at midfield, it's, it, they're just stunned by how large the ground is that they're, you know, and I tell them, I said, you know, some of these players are covering 13, 14 kilometers in the course of a game. Then I have to convert it to miles because they don't know what kilometers are. Uh, but, yeah, but it's like, it's like nine or 10 miles. And I said, and while that's happening, they're getting knocked on their butt 60 times during the course of the game. And still getting up and running, but you're right about it being a gladiator game. Oh, and you've got to be a damn athlete too. Don't worry, you've got to be able to run, run, run. Oh run, yeah, run. yeah. Which is why I watch <laughs> because I, there's, no, there's no way I could do it. Now I, as I mentioned to you, I I uh, I had a couple. Oh, my other screen just turned off for me. There, hang on a second. There we go. I think I'm getting my screen back on here now. There we go. I have I have a separate screen off to my side, other side here. Um, like I'd mentioned to you, I reached out to um, a couple different groups on online and uh, in that were both uh, North Melbourne and Richmond supporters to see what questions they might have or comments they would have. And I I had a couple. Um, and this is from somebody who said that they met you. In the 1970s, uh, through their mutual friends, uh, uh, somebody by the name of the Buckleys in North Melbourne, the Buckleys, they said, and uh, they invited you, you to a dinner party there. This person was there as well. And interestingly enough, this person's name is also John Perry. And you signed an autograph for him on a photograph you know, from one John Perry to another. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I can't think of that yeah. So that was, uh, it's just, it's kind of, uh, you know, very, Buckley. yeah. Somebody named by the name of Buckley's and somebody yeah. mentioned that Kevin Sheedy said that you are absolutely one of the best people that they ever, that he ever played with. Um, oh. just an absolutely, you know, class gentleman. Um, yeah, now sense. somebody did say that you, uh, that you ran the stump hotel for a number of years as well. 33, yeah. 33. 33. Now, oh, that, okay, now is that the same hotel that your mother was part of then as well? So that yeah. was so that was in the family for a long time then. Uh, yeah. Uh, dad's dad bought it in 28, 1928. Okay. Dad bought dad bought off him in 43. Okay. I came back home in 77 and sold it. Oh geez, 15 years ago now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Blazing Stump Hotel. It's a icon. Up yeah they said it was uh yeah and you know as these people here mentioned that you know that 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 was where they first met you and that it, it was you know that you are a fantastic supporter of local footy as we talked about already here uh they sent along a uh a photograph here i think it might actually be the photograph that you autographed as well then now i had a uh a gentleman by the name of wayne flanagan who dropped a note here that said my dear mate the late daryl sutton played a few games with you in 1973 yeah. before he contracted glandular fever and uh as he said as you know daryl returned to north in 76 and the rest is history if i if he had the chance to talk to you he'd ask uh what your memories were of daryl and more generally about being at north during the first year under uh, mr barassi and yes. he this gentleman was a statistician in 1973 for the ruse what was his name uh wayne flanagan no, I don't remember his name. Daryl Sutton, yes. Daryl was a, a very talented player, but he, he just lacked a bit of, um, he was, I shouldn't say he was slow, but he just lacked a bit of pace. Okay. And was found out at different times because of it. But a, a lovely contributor. Um, Daryl Sutton, yes, I heard he passed away. Yeah, it's uh, from Barassi. Yeah. Barassi came. Hey, listen, you've got to have a player. Don't worry about that. And Barassi had it. It makes a player, a, makes a coach, a, a coach. You know. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm not putting shit on Ron. He uh, he would have gone to North Melbourne if they weren't getting these ten year players. Okay. The club was on the rise. He wouldn't have picked North up from the bottom. He came when they were showing something. He brought a lot to the club as far as interest and when I say interest, but, but of course the football world looked at North Melbourne where Brassy came. Mm -hmm. And he yeah, won two premierships with him. Good on him. And in him in him being there, did that did that help to bring in some of those 10 year players? No, they'd come before. Um, oh, they come before. Okay. Okay. It, yeah, but didn't only last about four years. Maybe they got a couple at the end. Okay. Yeah. No, the players came because they got a few bob to squadly. Players left at, at 10, 10 years at their club. They went to a, a, another club because they were mercenaries. They earned a quid. They got 10 grand, which is a lot of money in those days. That, that, that is a lot of money, yeah. And they couldn't say no to it. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that they, yeah it, you, I would think you would have to take it. It was, uh, it was because, an awful rule. It was an awful rule, really. Right, but but at this point in time, you know, when you when you're playing the game, you know, playing in the VFL was still, it was not a full time job yet. I mean, no. in ma in many way in many ways, the position you were in in the 1960s and 70s is where the women in the AFLW find themselves today, where it still is a bit of a it's a part time job. Although in the last couple of days, they just got themselves a significant pay increase. Um, you know, where do I sign up to get a 94% increase in my salary? I, I, I might, I might keep teaching for another few years if they do that. Uh, I'm, I'm personally not a big fan, but then again, my granddaughters might play the game down the track. And there you uh, go. So yeah, I, sort of, I should zip my, zip my mouth. Well, it's, it has, I will say, you know, cause I've been watching it from the outset. It has improved every year as the, as the skill levels have improved, you know, scoring has improved, you know, somebody, Somebody described it to me during a discussion that it was that for the first couple of years, in many instances, that it was an awful lot like watching seagulls chasing after a chip. Uh, you know, the, as far as the ball. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. one. So, um, like you that. know, I uh, I had one. This was a this was a, uh, a kind of a fun one here. A gentleman by the name of Mark Peterson jotted down a note and said that that you played with his father robert peterson from 68 to 74 Robbie and he Perry. and he and he has a he put a smiley face on here and he said to ask mr perry was my dad really any good because i want to go ahead and verify dad's stories yeah Robbie, <laughs> bloody, he was a champion not only was he any good he was a great teammate too yeah he was just a lightly built rover uh he's a doctor at seymour now seymour's sort of a uh, hundred k's this side of um of Melbourne. Okay. Uh, Robbie, um, Bond's a boy. He didn't have any great strength because he wasn't built that way, but he played a lot of games and he gave it his all. He was a very much loved player at North Melbourne. There you go. And he okay. should be proud of his foot dad's football. <laughs> and I had uh, somebody said that they saw you playing either a practice match for Richmond or an Army in Navy inter service game at HMAS. Yes. Cerber Cerberus? Cer Cerberus, yes. Yeah, they saw you. They yeah. saw you playing in a game at Cerberus uh, yeah. at one point in time. So yeah. you were the best on ground that game. Oh Christ! They were going to kill us because they're all mature men. We were mm -hmm. just young bucks. Well, most of us were Nashos. Yeah. I was nineteen, and I, I remember I was captain. And uh, yeah, well, I was worried because I was worried that I was going to get hurt because I was going to go just belt us. But fair income, they hardly scored. We, yeah. we sh shit all over. <laughs> well, Never forget that match down at Cerebus. H M A S Cerebus. Now, yeah. keep in mind what you said a few moments ago is that you know you talked about how you know the game takes pace and that you have to be in extraordinarily good shape to to play the game. And you know you look at you know you look at the 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 players that are playing today. You know a lot of those younger players, those 19, 20, 21 year olds have that pace those older those older men that you were playing against might have been a step slower so you were you were able to uh to go ahead and have some success against them they get into the gyms at a younger age mm -hmm. they're, they're fairly well most of the boys that come into the caper at the age of 18 it's amazing how 
their bodies are like 25 year old men. They pump a lot of work into their bodies. Yeah. 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 And, and this, 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 this last one here that I jotted down that somebody shared, it might be a little bit obscure because it, this was gentleman with your coach, somebody by the name of Kay Murray said, I went to a party with John 50 years ago at Tom Hafey's house. He won't remember, but we do. <laughs> yeah, Tommy always just to, uh, their door was always open, Tommy. Yeah. And Lori, his wife, she, uh, hey, a wife's a very important part of a coach. Don't worry about that. Because we've all got had girlfriends or wives and if we're, their girls are happy, we're happy, and the, and, and the coach's wife has a lot to do with with um, with the wives and partners of uh, mm-hmm. players. Yeah, Maureen Hafiz was was always dear old Tommy. Maureen's still going well, dear little more. But okay. uh, yeah, they welcomed us, welcomed us at their home whenever we were driving past. So let me ask you this question uh, uh, before we wrap up here about the the present day. Do the does this Tigers group have another premiership run in them? Yes. You can okay. see it over the last three weeks. We've got a, all our players have come together again from different injuries. Mm-hmm. They're starting to worry about us, Craig. Yeah. But then again, we play Essendon tonight. Well, yes. That's They're right. on the back foot because they've been, they've been poured a lot of shit on them about being scared. And they'll yes. be coming up tonight. They'll be, whew, they'll have, they'll be proving to the football world that they're not, they're not scared. They're, they'll be, they'll give it. Their, geez, it's going to be a tough game tonight. But we're we're so classy, Richmond. I reckon mm-hmm. the movement of the ball and the handling of the ball is superb. Well, and and it's starting to be where you're starting to see some of the younger players on the club begin to step into the forefront you know yes you know tom lynch is you know you know is up there in second place on the coleman ladder right now you know jack rewald has kind of taken a step back from him a little bit you know trent cochin is from what i've gathered he's kind of moved forward a little bit from time to time to allow some of the younger players to come into the midfield a little bit to, you know, who have a little bit more pace because you know, you know more about the type of the league yeah <laughs> i mean shea bolton shea bolton is is an absolute you know oh. Yeah, you you, ha, you can't not watch him play. Oh, and the uh, the youngest uh, is it Maurice Rioli? I know he's only played a yes. few games. Morris. Yeah, Morris. Morris. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be a, a, a fun player to watch. Yeah. You know, growing up. Um, as long as they can keep their pace and their enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah, don't get too big, too heavy. Yeah, we've got Daniel Rioli. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, oh, no, it's been, hey, look, we're looking good, I tell you. We've just got to hold on to our <sighs> key backman mm-hmm. uh, from injury. Um, like we've had Velastin out most of the year. But look, no, Richmond are all right, mate. They're all starting to take notice yeah. of it. Yeah, and I, and I think, yeah, I, 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 think, they, they're, I, I think they're going to handle Essendon tonight. It's okay. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Geelong are gone, right? Right. I, you know, I, I have a friend who always, who keeps referring to, and, and I know the reference, they keep referring to them as dad's army. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a, you know, I, 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 I tipped them to finish sixth this year. Did you? Okay. I didn't, I wasn't going to be, I didn't tip them in the top four. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be, I, I mean, I, I had, uh, I had Melbourne finishing in the top and I think I had the Bulldogs finishing second. I tipped the Bulldogs to win the premiership. And they've got to find their way back into the eight before they can do that, um, which yeah. is which is interesting because I actually I tipped the Suns to beat them at Ballarat this weekend. So, oh um, yeah, yeah, because sure. they're and that and I I know that you know there are a lot of people who are are footy purists that 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 they still kind of just cringe when they think about you know a footy club at, at the Gold Coast. And you know yeah. the, 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 the you know the, the league has invested so much in that yeah. club that it almost has to become successful, you know, because they're you know as they're as they're throwing good money after bad, if you will, that yes. they almost have to ensure that that club becomes a quality side, and they're and they're getting there, they're getting close. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's been encouraging the last couple of weeks. 
Good on yeah. them. I mean, you know, they went into Sydney and beat the Suns and, you know, and just shut down the Dockers last week. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I just I just have a feeling they're gonna they're gonna take this one this week. So it's interesting listening to you talk about our game. When I say you, well there's there, a country there's, with a different accent. There is a contingent of us here. You know, there are there are actually that I know of. There are actually four four people that do that are Americans that actually do podcasts about the game. Um, you know, there are several people that write about it. I mean, we you know there are a dozen of us here that are that haven't like a, one of the fantasy teams, uh, like the super. I don't, you might have heard of Super Coach before. It's the online fantasy game where you yes, pick sir. your player. That's right. Yeah. There, there are there's like a dozen of us that have a, a you know that have a league that we play in together that we got onto a a zoom call like this where all 12 of us were on there when we drafted our players and just you know had a you know had a great discussion and it you know we were in all four time zones across the across the continent you know it's just you know it's just like i said i, I love the game and i i love trying to convince people to check out the game you know, we have kick goals over there Yes, we haven't sent teams over there. Right, the right. The premiership. Well, no, you have. It was supposed to have happened last year. I know that because they're Essendon and GWS were supposed to come here and play round one in no, Los she, Angeles no, last she, year. She wanted to go over. Yeah. Yeah. She you know, and, it's, and you know, we'll, you know. So it would take a lot out of a club to go over there and come back and play again the following week back here. Right. Which maybe it ends up happening. What you know, if they bring in the 19th, and I think they have to bring in the 19th club in Tasmania, I think, yeah, you know, that's you've got so many players that come out of Tasmania that, that are playing in, in the game. Yeah, if you're if you're you know, the, 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 the whole Rewalt clan coming out of Tasmania, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's um, different. you know, so maybe if they get a 19th club, then maybe the teams that they that they bring here to if they play a game in say round one here, maybe though they have their bye week. They have their week off in round two and get a chance to recover, maybe. Yeah, who knows? Getting back to the Rewalts from Tasmania, Geelong might bloody pick up the Rewalts in the draft. You know <laughs> Be what I mean? Because, no, of their, because of their age? No, there's no, no, I'm talking about if they were kids. Oh, okay. They're, yeah. They're no, just because players are brought up in Tasmania, there's no guarantee they're going to play there because mm -hmm. they could be drafted to go anywhere in Australia. Right, right. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, and I I know the zone stuff, the zone thing has kind of gone by the wayside now, if I'm not mistaken. But What's that? Like, the zoning in terms of the club, oh, yeah, 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 that that yeah. is that's kind of gone. Although they they still have that, I think for the the two clubs in Queensland and the two in uh, New South Wales, I think both Sydney clubs and then Brisbane and GWS still have that to allow them to establish their academies that they have. Yes, yes okay, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, so it's it's you know it's um, but yeah. Bottom line, I, I'm I'm fa I'm fascinated by the game. I love learning about it, and well, you're on the right track, Craig. I I appreciate it, and it, it's, a bloody, it's a bloody ripper. Oh, you know, it is, and I, and I and I I I do have to you know full disclosure. I did tell you that that there you know that you know as we talked about off air that I you know I I'm I'm supposed to not like Hawthorne because I'm a Geelong supporter, yeah. but. I don't dislike any of the clubs, but I'm I'm a little I'm a little frustrated with, with one of them. Okay, because la after I'd had Frank Davis on, I and uh, I got a I got an email from SEN uh, that they wanted to talk to him uh, before uh, the kind of like they did the articles with you having you know before the 2017 Grand Final with the Tigers that they reached out to people who played on. Was was the sixty seven one the most previous one prior to twenty seventeen? No. Okay, no, so there's, there were some in between then, right? Four in between. Okay, um, but there hadn't been any for for Melbourne, so they wanted no. they wanted to talk to you know to Frank Davis, so they wanted his contact information. So I gave it to him, and they they told me they said, well, you know, and this was on the the program called the Sporting Capital that's on there, and they uh -huh. said, well, you know, we'd like to get you on the talk because you know it's kind of interesting, you know, an American who loves this game and is doing a podcast about it. So I'm up at four o'clock in the morning, my time on the Thursday before the grand final, ready to go on that, mm -hmm. that radio show. And I checked my email 
that they decided to they had to they had to cancel me being on there because Carlton couldn't wait until the Monday after the grand final to hire Mike hire Michael Voss to be the new senior coach. Okay. So so they talked about Vossy all day instead of you know instead of getting me on there. So well, I don't dislike Carlton. I'm just a little grump. I'm a little grumpy about the fact they couldn't wait for a couple more days. We we play football to beat those bastards. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Collingwood. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, Collingwood this soon. Well, see, I you know when I was when I was deciding on what club to support, I had actually narrowed it down to three clubs and the cats ended up winning out, but I um Collingwood was one. I because I but I eliminated them because I my thinking was, you know, I, I, and I don't know why I was thinking this at the time, but I, I eliminated them because I thought, you know what, I want to go ahead and support a club that's not one of the, one of the nine that are in the, the, the heart of the game in Melbourne. You know, Geelong is kind of on the periphery, you know, that yeah, there was that Ford connection, but the other one that I almost oh, yeah. chose to support was Brisbane. Oh, yeah. You know, so. And I, I don't think I could have gone wrong with either one of those, but like, but I do, I mean, I talked to supporters of, of all the clubs and it's not, you know, and I, I'm not somebody that likes to give, I'm not somebody that's going to, you know, just go be a jerk to anybody about the fact that their club lost or anything like that. Craig, watch, than, out, watch, out for, watch out for the Lions. They're a big, uh, a big threat this year. I think so. I think Don't so. I, 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 I think that the, uh, I think it could definitely be the D's facing them. Um, you know, especially if, if uh, Joe Danaher comes back and uh, Daniel McStay comes back in a couple of weeks because they have then. These are on the ball. Like rounds like 12 through 14, they've got the D's, the D's, the Dockers, and somebody else who's in the top five, I think, that they're playing like back to back to back games against. Absolutely. So if they, if, if they get those guys back, that could help. You know, that could really help. And I don't know. You know, I don't know who's going to stop Melbourne the way they're playing i mean it's i have you have you this this film may have come along too late you may not be a big movie fan but did you ever see the movie the terminator with arnold schwarzenegger okay okay that's okay but they remind i i keep calling melbourne that i keep saying that melbourne is a lot like that character from that film because they're because they they don't they they seem to not take any sympathy or any mercy on anybody they just they're just very linear and linear in their thinking and they just keep just going and beating the beating the crap out of other teams right now and they've got they've got the ruse this weekend so i mean their their percentage is i think 159 right now and they've got a chance to probably add on a few more points before this weekend is up unfortunately <laughs> i think your, your assessment is pretty right yeah they're a bit I, scary uh, yeah. but oh jesus we always give our own teams a bit of leeway I'd still be aware of the Tigers, mate. No, I, I, I don't think you're wrong on there because I, I did put them back in my eight this year. I think I had them at eight. A four. Yeah, yeah, oh, I did. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Uh, you know, I mean, I had the Dockers last year. I had the Dockers at number eight. This year, I think I put them at thirteenth because I the last two years I've had them in my top eight and they've not. Mm. They just weren't able to score enough. They kept. They, yeah, and I'd said if they could score another goal and a half a game that could be a dangerous club and they've figured out how to do that now. And they're doing, they're doing it without, you know, Matt Fife. And then last week they get done going. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Well, okay. sir. I'm going to. I, I, I certainly, time. I thank you so very much. Well, thank you, Craig. For your time this morning. This has been an I'm absolute so joy. Someone from another country has got so much love for our game. Oh, I absolutely do. And, and I understand I, why you do. I don't want to be one-eyed. <laughs> no, but, but you know what? It's, it is, it is, you know, it's, it is such a dynamic game and it's something that if, if people actually get the chance to see it, yeah. how can we they expose get, it? They get fascinated how, by it. How you can know, we, we expose our game more than we're right, doing now? Right. That's, that's well, a question that well, now we, people should be asking you. That's what, what we, can we do yeah. to expose our game more in, 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 in the States. Well, and we finally, you know, when, uh, when the COVID lockdowns happened and, you know, they canceled, you know, the baseball season was shut down here. Um, they had, 
uh, they were they were showing every single footy right. game on TV here because it was the only live sport that was being played on the planet. Oh, yeah. right. So people were talking about it a little bit. But this year, they didn't. We didn't get. You know, again, I can watch all of the games through the my mem- my international membership with the Cats. I get a, I get a device that allows me to watch. I can watch all the games live. I can go back and watch games all the way back to 2017 if I want to. And then all of the TV shows that Fox footy does um, as well. (laughs) But um, we didn't get our first games on like regular television here, like on satellite or cable TV here until round eight this year. So we went through the first seven rounds with no games on here. So as we're trying, as those of us who love this game are trying to tell people about it here, there's nothing for them to see. And you, and you can't, yeah. you can't, you know, convince them to, yeah. to invest, you know, $130 in a membership for a club, for a game they've never seen. But if you, if the game is on here, we can get them to, you know, spend, you know, yeah. to watch the huh. game and go, okay, this is pretty interesting. And then maybe I'll watch another one, maybe another one. And maybe in two years, I become an international member. You know, and, I, and I've, I've joked with this. I've said, you know, if, if the AFL can figure out how to get just 1% of this country interested in footy, Oof. that's 1% is three point, what's, that's 10% of the Australian population. It's over 3 million people. It's just the game's just waiting to be picked up. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and it's being played here. Like I said, there are, there's over 50 teams playing here in the United States. A lot of, a lot of people are Aussie expats that live here, but a lot of them are Americans as well that, that, that have picked up the game that have fallen in love with it. And that's what I'm going, that's what I'm going to watch tomorrow morning down in, uh, in our capital in Columbus. Well, well be proud, yeah. Craig, be proud. Yes. Well, thank you, sir. You've, and, got, and, a, you've got a game to be proud of. No, I, I absolutely do. And I hope I hope in about four hours I'm very proud that things have gone well down at GMBHA. Cause you know, this is the you know, it's it's round ten and this is only the third game that the cats have played in Geelong this year. What does GMH G B stand for? Uh I it's it's the name it's the the naming rights for the stadium in at, at Cardinia Park. You know what it means? GMBHA. I think it's a hospital. Geelong, I think it's Geelong Metro Hospital something or no. I I'll be honest, I don't know. I I just I it's Cardinia Park. Yeah, I don't know. I uh somebody's gonna tell me that and, and be mad that I didn't know what that acronym was, but uh I apologize for not knowing it. But ladies and gentlemen, my guest has been uh John Perry, premiership player with the Richmond Tigers, and John. Thank you so very much for taking time out of your Saturday morning, sir. I, I, this was an, an absolute joy. Oh, hi. And for me too, Craig. Bloody ripper. I appreciate it, sir. Thank Good you boy. so very much. Yes. See you. And a huge thank you to John Perry for being so generous with his time. This was just an absolute delight. He was, he was a, a, a wonderful gentleman. He was a gracious guest. I, I loved learning about the game from the the vantage point of of someone who went through a change of clubs uh, and how that was beneficial to him in the long run. He did win a premiership, uh, but it was just an absolutely fascinating discussion. And I'm hoping that that discussion is going to lead to some others. Uh, We've discussed that a little bit, and we, we shall see what happens with that. Now, many of you, like I said, have signed up for my mailing list over on the website, uh, yankonthefooty.com. I do encourage you to ask your uh, friends who are footy fans to sign up as well. And uh, you can also find that document over in the show notes in terms of how to do that. And when I do finally start doing some live episodes again, that's how I notify people first and foremost is through email, letting know them know that that is happening. Now, folks, I want to thank you for listening because we're fans of our own clubs. I'm recording this after the games of round 11. We had a fantastic round of footy, some great finishes. I know if you're a Blues supporter, you're not thrilled about the outcome last night, but that was one heck of a game between the Blues and the Magpies. I watched it this morning. It was an absolutely wonderful finish to that game, just a lot of action in it. And if you're enjoying the show, I do hope you'll you'll consider sharing a link 
And I do hope you'll consider possibly leaving a review for the uh, episode as well if you're enjoying it. And folks, thank you so very much for the kind words. Your support, as always, is, is greatly appreciated. I, I enjoy doing this labor of love, and I'm glad that you're enjoying it as well. And ladies and gentlemen, as always, may your dribble kick never hit the post. I will catch you later. This has been episode 172 of A Yank on the Footy. Don't forget that you can reach me at yank underscore on on Twitter or to yank on the footy at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram at yank on the footy and on Facebook. Just look for A Yank on the Footy podcast. Again, thanks for listening. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Craig Wessels. Goodbye. <laughs>